Hey guys, Patrick from Specifics Prep here. Today I wanted to talk to you about a math concept that you're gonna see a lot on the SATs, deal specifically with algebra questions, and that is uh, when the tests ask you to solve for a weird quantity. Um, a good friend of mine, who also sort of deals with the SAT, uh, tells people that the SAT is a tricky test. It can make, you know, what is two plus two a confusing question. And, you know, when he says that, I always see looks on people's faces and they say, well, what, what exactly does that mean? How can you possibly make what is two plus two confusing? And uh, asking for a weird quantity is one of the ways that they, they take such a simple concept as a, such as addition and just twist it in a, in a sort of a very sort of slight, almost imperceptible way, uh, and make the question difficult. And we're going to see some examples of those in a second, but I just want to sort of set the broader context for this. When you're in math class and your teacher throws an algebra question at you and says solve for x, your teacher is testing your ability to you know, follow rules of algebra to get x by itself on one side of the equation. right? Uh, and that's what your teacher cares about, that's what you're being graded on, and that's what you get an A in algebra for. Uh, on the SAT, they're still concerned about that, but they're less concerned about your algebraic manipulation abilities and more interested in your ability to read the question carefully. Um, so the big piece of advice that I want you to take away from today's lecture is that uh, I want you to pay attention to what the question's asking at all times. It, it's not going to ask for x every single time. It may ask for 2x, it may ask for 4x, it may ask for you know 2x plus y. Whatever the question's asking for, that's what you should be solving for in the most direct uh, sort of elegant way possible. And again, we're going to see some examples of those in a second, uh, but I just wanted to preface the uh, practice questions by saying, read the question carefully. The math test is a reading test uh, in many instances. Okay, let's get started. And the really important thing to remember when you're de dealing with questions like this is to always pay attention to the actual question, right? What are they asking you to solve for? So let's take a look at number four. Number four, obviously, is not going to be a terribly difficult question, but um, you want to pay close attention to the actual question, right? So it's asking for 4x plus 10. It's not asking for x, right? So look what they're giving you. They tell you that 2x plus 5 equals 14, and they want to know what 4x plus 10 is. So the one thing I want you to ask yourself is, is there an elegant, sort of straightforward way to go from here to here, right? Do I have to solve for x first and then do all this stuff, or can I go directly from the uh, provided uh, equation to what they're asking me for? And, and if you look at this, it's pretty obvious that you could just take this entire thing and multiply each, about, each of the terms by 2, right? Uh, 2x times 2 is 4, uh, 5 times 2 is 10, right? Which means that the answer is 28, and we're done. So that's a really, really simple, really, really straightforward example of just using the question to guide your approach. It's a really, really important technique. Let's try something similar on a slightly more difficult question. Okay, again, this one says 4a plus 8b minus 8 equals 10. And they want to know the value of a plus 2b. And again, a lot of students will look at this and say, oh, I have two unknowns, right? I have an a and a b, uh, therefore I need two equations. And that is generally very true uh, if the question asks for the value of a uh, and the value of b, right? If they want to know the value of each one individually, then yes, you do need two equations. But this question is not asking for a and it's not asking for b, right? It's asking for a plus 2b. So again, it's really important to shut down a portion of your brain that forces you to approach these questions exactly like a school question and just answer the question that's being asked. So, um, again, you want to ask yourself, is there a way to go from what they're giving me to this? Well, in order to make this look more like this, the first thing I want to do is get the 8 over, right? So I'm going to add 8 to both sides, and I get 4a plus 8b equals 18, right? Now, to go from 4a plus 8b to a plus 2b, I can divide this by 4, right? And again, I have to do it to both sides of the equation. So, uh, 4 a divided by 4 is a, perfect. Uh, 8b divided by 4 is 2, perfect, right? Uh, so uh, I've solved directly for the left-hand side of the equation, and the right side of the equation is simply 18 over 4, which I can just grid. No need to reduce. If it fits, just grid it. Uh, obviously, you'll get credit for uh, you know 4.5, but you can just grid 18 over 4 or 9 over 2 or whatever sort of variation. You don't need to reduce. As long as it fits, we'll give you credit for it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's take a look at a slightly more difficult one. Uh, this is number 11. Um, 
probably should have made it a higher number because it's a little more difficult, but we'll get the idea. All right, so in this case, it says 3x plus y over y equals 4 thirds. What's the value of x over y? So again, um, this question involves getting one side of the equation to say x over y. It does not involve solving for x and solving for y. That's impossible based on uh, the information provided. Um, so anytime you see uh, a fraction equal to a fraction, I want you to think about cross multiplying. Uh, and that's certainly the most straightforward way of simplifying this. So let's cross multiply here. We get 9x plus 3y equals 4y. Okay, multiplied uh, across. Um, and let's combine the y's. So we get 9x equals y, right? Okay, cool. Now, I need to get one side of this to equal x over y. So it's really important to decide what I want to do right here. To get the y in the denominator, I need to divide both sides by y. So I'm going to do that. And I get 9xy equals 1, right? I'll write this over here because I'm running out of room. 9x over y equals 1, right? And all you need to do now is get rid of the 9. So guess what? I divide both sides by 9. These drop out. I get x over y, and the answer is 1 over 9. Make sense? Okay, again, pay attention to what the question is asking. Do not solve for, do not attempt to solve for each variable individually. Just answer the question, right? If it asks for a weird quantity, just try to get that weird quantity on one side of the equal side and everything else on the other side. Okay, so today we saw that just like every single other question on the SAT, it's really, really, really important to answer the question that's being asked. So with algebra, sometimes they're going to ask you a weird question. Uh, therefore, you must find a weird answer. If they ask for A over B, don't worry about finding A and then finding B. Just find A over B. Um, always pay attention to what the question's asking and try to shut off that portion of your brain that says, I need to approach this the way I would approach uh, a math question in school. Uh, it's a much, much different animal. Okay? All right. So, see you guys in a few weeks. We'll do some more math questions. Bye bye.